My name is Nina Simone Wright. I'm an actress, producer, author, philanthropist, business owner, baddie, prayer warrior. <laughs> yes, she prays. And most of all, I love me some God. And guess what? I believe you don't have to choose that you can be authentically you. So welcome to the Nina Show, where righteous meets ratchet. Hi, everyone, and welcome to The Nina Show, where righteous meets ratchet. I'm your host, Nina Simone Wright, and today I have the privilege of hosting and talking to the incomparable four-time Emmy Award-winning television journalist, Francesca Amaker. Francesca! that we can finally have our conversations yes. on, cam on camera the conversations we have every single day yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah so a lot of people don't know but Fred and I have actually known each other since high school oh my goodness yes 2000 and easily 2006 yeah seven. yeah mm -hmm. yeah and we actually started off our days in New York City oh my gosh yeah. I was there first and Fran moved up there and we kind of had a whirlwind we definitely did. A whirlwind. Trying to find ourselves. Yes. Being found by yes. others. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we were definitely found by others. We were hunting out. Okay. We were fresh meat. I mean. Up in them New York streets. I mean, who would blame them? I mean, you know. <laughs> the Lord was blessing in Jesus' day. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. So, Fred, when you moved up to New York, I remember that you were just graduating out of journalism school. She went to Vanderbilt. Yeah. And she was so excited. And I remember one of my favorite stories of you. It was in the rain. And you went and took, like, you made, like, these little boxes yes, with, like, I shoes. Did. Remember I little did. baby shoes? Girl, I will not. How do I forget it? Yes. It was my story of, like, perseverance yeah. and, and resilience while still trying to have fun. Like, yeah. Nina, if y'all don't know, please, first and foremost, subscribe. Make sure you comment yes. as well. She is a light. And I think from her show, she's going to be able to shine that light on other people and also share her own testimonies. Right. But you were a light for me in New York City when it was such a dark time in my life. Right. I mean, you know, we had similar backgrounds when it comes to high school. We were the successful girl. Yeah, so like, we, were. we were that girl. We were that girl. And when I graduated from Vanderbilt University, I mean... I was still on top, like just on top. Like I knew what I wanted to do. I've never yeah. questioned that. I knew that I wanted to be a television host. Right. I knew I wanted to be a local news reporter. Right. And I was so excited. But then when I left Vanderbilt, after I had 12 different internships, that's what got me. 12 days. 12 days. You did everything you were supposed that's to do. That's what I'm saying. You did everything you were supposed to do. Yeah. Okay. And, and, I, and I know you'll have a word for us towards the middle or end of this, but like sometimes you do everything that you're supposed to do and yeah. sometimes it's just not the right timing. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. So I did my 12 internships at Vanderbilt, thought that that prepared me for like getting an immediate job after I graduated. Right. And lo and behold, it didn't happen. So for I how many months? Oh, 13 months. 13 months and in the interim, I got a chance to be with you yeah. and your best friend, Kayla, and we oh, we kikied all up and down in New York City. But the story that Nina's talking about is, okay, so I, people. I have this thing where, you know, you literally can't accept no. And sometimes if they do say no, it's because maybe you asked at the wrong time yeah. or you asked in the wrong way or right. maybe you weren't prepared with that ask to mm -hmm. bring some type of gift or some type of reasoning as to why mm -hmm. you should be chosen for a position or at least given a shot. Absolutely. And so at the time uh, in New York City, I was just there, thank goodness. Just so y'all know, I worked with my dad selling cemetery plots and mausoleums to gain enough money to come to New York wow. City to be able to fund that time. I have such a similar story. Girl. Oh, yeah. While I applied, I was I, I worked for my dad for several months, got a few thousand to stack up, went, lived with some random girls in New York City. God! Oh my god. Oh we got to tell you, you got to tell that story. Go ahead, girl. We'll get to that story. We'll get to that story. But, but um <laughs> Uh, I wanted to be seen by the executive producers yeah. of of Inside Edition and um, at the time it was Global Grind was another big publication mm -hmm. there which is still in service and I wanted to I wanted them to hear me and see me but when you call no one's picking up when you email no one's yeah. responding right? right so what I did what Nina's referencing is I actually got a chance to go to Dollar Tree it was like the 99 cent store and I was like what can I do I gotta think outside the box and I need to show them that I need to get my foot in the door. Yeah. So what I did was 
I uh, bought like this um, box and also like a couple of um, uh, bags, like a tissue paper bag, right? I had tissue paper too, put a bunch of like candy and whatnot. Um, and then I bought these little shoes. <laughs> baby shoes, y'all. Baby, baby shoes. shoes. <laughs> and then I took my resume, rolled it up, put a ribbon on my resume, put it inside the box, put it inside the bag. And then I dropped it off with the security at, or the downstairs person um, at Inside Edition. Yeah. And it was my way of getting my foot in the door. door. It was. And it so was. I never ever heard from the executive producers at Inside Edition, but yeah. it's cool because it wasn't the right timing. I wasn't ready yet. I had just graduated from college. And a lot of y'all folks out there, when you graduate from college, you think that you're supposed to get that six figure oh, job. Oh, it's coming right after I graduate. Seven figure job. You know what I'm saying? I was a star when I popped out my mama's womb. Yes. You yeah. were. And you yeah. still are but there are so many things yeah. that life has to teach you there are so many ex pieces of experience that you yeah. need to get from your field yeah. as one of my mentors uh, one day one said to me you have to make your mistakes in a small market so that you don't make it on a grand scale in a big market that's very good. you do not want to be embarrassed you do not and how many times do we open up these blogs and we see these young folks out mm -hmm. here and they making big big, big mistakes. mistakes and you never hear from them again yeah. And it's because nobody wants to do the small things. Nobody wants to be faithful over, I, I take a scripture, we take a text, be faithful over that which is another man or be faithful over little so God can make you ruler over much. Amen. And I believe that that was one of the things that we were in New York. Yes. Now let's fast forward. <laughs> because let me tell y'all something. When we were in New York, me and Fran, we were dedicated to having a good time. And I do mean a good time. You were in New York, you were, you know, trying to get your foot in the yeah. door. And I was fin starting my first year of grad school. Mm -hmm. So I was like going to school and the next thing you know, me and Fran would be hanging out and we had a time. And the street, the, the street. <laughs> we had a time in the street. In the most fun loving, yes. um, safe way, I yes. will say that. Yeah, yes. we were yes. out here in the streets for real, for real, but we were partying and stuff. Yes, we were. Mm -hmm. We had a good time. Mm -hmm. We had a good time. And fast forward ten years later. Godly, how crazy is that? I know. Tell them. You want to tell them how we how we even spotted each other? We no. You tell. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so y'all, I have been in LA for like a year and a half, right? Okay. I've been here for eight, almost nine. And <laughs> at the time when we saw each other, she was here for eight years, and I had been here for maybe maybe four or five months or so. Mm -hmm. And I got an invitation, and so did she, to one of our girlfriend's uh, birthday parties. And it was taking place at a club in um, New York City. Mm -hmm. And the club, literally, I mean, every the who's who were invited to this party. I mean, literally anyone from the owner of Twitter to every single athlete that you can think of. Yeah. But that was just the circle that um, we know. Yeah. So we get there. I'm <laughs> sitting there, and I go I go to places like by myself. But sometimes I just, I'm a people watcher. So I just go and I, mm, la, la, la. she's sitting, I'm bopping mm. in, bop, 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 And here I am. Hey, mm. y'all. This is me. This is Nina. <laughs> hey, y'all. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, I look up. I'm like, Nina? <laughs> Nina's bopping around. Probably like a little drink in her hand. I had a drink in my hand. <laughs> Like, no freaking way and immediately I felt what that warmth that bright spot that happiness that I had when I saw Nina and was hanging out with Nina um, and bonding with Nina and building that friendship and that relationship yeah. 10 years ago y'all years ago and since then we have been constantly every other day or every, every once a week we, yeah. we hanging out we doing something yeah you know we're hanging we're, we're uh, on the tele telephone with each other mm -hmm. and um it's just crazy again I don't think that that was happenstance no I think it was I think it meant was to be I was at a point in my life where yeah. you know I was just kind of working and that was it right I think what I what I believe that was was God showing us how he brought us 10 years it was literally 10 years yeah of when you moved mm -hmm. and I then moved out here, we totally lost communication. Mm -hmm. And then 10 years later, here we are, and we are in a year after this four-time Emmy yeah. Award winning, you know, you're working for the network that you've always dreamed yeah. of being in. But at the same time, as we begin to talk, we're like, but we still ain't where we thought we were That's right. Be. And it's funny yeah. that, you know, we always talk about society moving the needle. Yeah. You know? And it's like, oh man, like I want, they, they tell me I need to qualify for mm -hmm. this and I do this, that, and the third, and yep. they move the needle. Yep. But but we have to realize that our vision board continuously moves too. Right. What we want, our aspirations, our goals, we're constantly moving the needle in that regard. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, you probably realize so many different yeah. dreams that you had 10 years ago. In the past 10 years, you've right. already, you've hit them. You've hit those goals. But now you've moved your own goals. Move the needle. And the ones and even the goals that have not yet been realized yeah. that we didn't realize that the journey was the goal. 
that the real dream yeah. was the journey. The real dream is that I'm here, that we're present, that we are on our way, you know? Mm -hmm. And so sometimes I believe God brought, brings people together to be like, okay, remember 10 years ago, yeah. you said you were going to be here, now what's next? And that is a brilliant point right there. Yeah. And I think this is the part of your show where I'm just going to be open and honest. Like the fact that you just said the journey is the dream. I never really thought about it like yeah. that. I never saw it like that. I still don't know if I can subscribe to that. Because <laughs> yeah. I want what I want. What you want, friend? Godly, that's the thing. Now, what is the vision? Now, see, because I've, I've arrived at E! News. That was on my vision board for years, y'all. Yeah. I have emails since 2012. It is now 2012. 23 and wow. I finally got with E in 2022. Yeah. 10 years later. Yeah. So it's like I finally realized, oh my God, I'm with E. Wow. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I literally am at the fir first time in my life. My parents are also concerned because I they'll call me and well, how's everything going? I'm like, it's going. Yeah. What's next? I don't know. Yeah. And um, I used to just like tremble in my boots saying mm -hmm. that, being unsure, not yeah. certain. Yeah. Because because we've always had yeah. a, a we, we always, know we're going. Always. Oh, this is going to be this. this is gonna be it. I'm going to be the next. Hey. I remember in the back seat, someone was driving us to New York City, you know, uh -huh. and he asked me, you know, what's your dream? What's your dream job? And I said, I'm going to be the next Oprah. Okay. I said, I'm going to be with E! News one day. I'm going to be with Good Morning America one Move day. Move out Oprah. And then all of a sudden, yeah. I've interviewed her two or three times. Yeah. I'm with E! News. Yeah. And it's now I, I want more, yeah. but I'm not sure what that more is. Exactly. Exactly. And I would dare to say that even in getting to some of the accomplishments that we've already said, some of the ones that we thought that we wanted, maybe we don't want it in the same regard. Mm -hmm. Because now I've seen what the sacrifices is to get there. True. And it's like, hmm, is that what I want? Do I want something that I have to clock into every day? Is that the navigation? That's a great point. Yeah. And I would know when I was fasting, um, trying to get a word from God mm -hmm. as it pertains to this podcast, the thing that he brought me to again was, what do you want? What do you want? People talk about manifesting. I'm talking about prayer. And when we begin to pray and we decree and we declare, one of those things is, is God says, write the vision and make it plain. Okay? Mm. So that you won't tarry from it. Okay? You, you got to make sure that vision is plain. Mm. And I think when 2020 happened, for me, I kind of let go of all visions and dreams. Because I was like, well, Lord, you got your own plan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got your own plan. You know, at this point, have your way. But no, God says that I'm going to drive this vehicle, but you got to know clearly because when you don't know what you want, you're going to get all of what you don't. It's true. That's a good yeah. point. You could be swayed by the enemy. You be swayed by multiple people demons. and ooh, Jesus, Any and, everyone. and opinions. So let's talk about everybody who has an opinion on social media yeah. nowadays. Yeah. Who don't know what they're talking about? That's very true. Everybody has something to say yeah. and nothing to say at the same time. Absolutely nothing. And I love the fact that you pivoted this conversation to a now you're restructuring what you do want. We've yeah. talked about it off, not on your show, but we'll bring it here now yeah. since your show is full transparency. Yeah. We've talked about dating now Ooh, and, child. you know, being a woman who can you have it all as a woman and, you know, we've been, we've been uh, selfish. I shouldn't say the word selfish, but we've been selfish. I like the word selfish. We've been selfish for, yeah. you know, almost 30 years. I'm and, selfish. Uh -huh. I admit it. <laughs> <laughs> I got no problem. I got no problem. I ain't gonna quit it. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> But we've, you know, we've been proudly spelled selfish for over 30 years or yeah. almost 30 years. Look at me trying to... Don't be telling my age. See me, see me? Sure. Uh, almost 30 years. I'm a Gen Zer. <laughs> <laughs> and with that being said, now we're at a point in our lives, and I'm not talking about a, 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 the, the ticking of the clock or yeah. anything like that, but we are at a point in our lives where we, we do wish for and long for companionship yeah. and to share these dreams and these, you know, these red carpets that we grace and these awesome achievements that we are getting in our yeah. lives. Um, you want to share it with someone. Yeah. And it does, it, it's just in the back of my mind at least where you know where does where these where, where am i going to find the man or yeah. or if i have a man already where does he want to go yeah. where does he see the future yeah because once you start and i can say this for me having a lot of friends that are married now seeing i know that i was not in a relationship for the longest time because i wanted my career to be everything right now getting older and realizing what marriage is what commitment is what is really dying to self <sighs> So we bring up that word selfish and it's like, am I really ready to die to self? Oh, that sounds so, that sounds so harsh. But seriously, like I would be marrying someone and if I think about it from a man being the head and him being a doctor or him being this and he says, 
well, you got to move over to Africa because I'm feeding the needy. Or my man is a pastor. He's saying, God is leading me to New Zealand to do this. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold up. But as a wife, that would be what I would be required to do is to follow my mm -hmm. husband on his journey and his uh, his dream, right? In 2023, not so, not so fast. Not so fast? Not so fast. Because we have so many women here who are now... Um, I mean, they, they're no longer, it's no longer the early, the early 1800s or yeah. the early 1900s where you now have to, here's that word, submit to your man and, and go, go where he goes and your dream dies. Do you not have to? No, I'm fine with submitting to a man, but a man that is deserving, absolutely. But I'm saying we're at a point where women have the right to have dreams and achieve those dreams and put those dreams on the same table and say well this is what i'm bringing to the table let's see what we can compromise on okay okay i know we're going i know you old school okay but it, it, there is some you compromise. know here's the thing and i, I who there you, should be compromise who it's 2023 who, who, women can read and write and vote who do you know that has that type of relationship Drop a, drop me a note, y'all. Write me in. Because everybody I know mm -hmm. who is married, they have had to have some level of dying to self. I can, I can see that. I can in see order that. to, even when it comes to having kids. You know, I might not be ready for a kid, but if my husband is ready, I have to somehow do that in order for my marriage to work. But there's just so many different dynamics. Like take for instance, I just interviewed um, Candy Burris okay. at the um, Essence Black Woman in Hollywood luncheon. Okay. And you know, she's extremely successful. We call her Candy Keep a Bag. Hey, keep a Bag Keep Burris. a Bag Candy. And look at the dynamic of their relationship. Yeah. You know, she met Todd through work. Todd was also still working. He wasn't some random young man that she yeah. met any, anywhere. He had his own yeah, job. He did. And then they came to Together, they they compromised you know and she came up with her business developments and her plans and thereafter and then he came up with you know the, the lady gang and, and all these other different uh, restaurants that yeah. are all throughout Atlanta and it's like they're working together and even with the child they work together they spoke that out I feel like they're very 50 50 That's true. and when it comes to fame yes we know Candy is from escape yeah. we know that she's this living legend I understand that but there's still that compromise and I think every single marriage deserves that if it works for you yes but if, if it works for you but Going back to what we were talking about on our timeline, I'll tell you, as I was preparing for this podcast, I opened up a book and uh, actually it was on my iPad and I, I write down all these goals that I have for the year. So in 2020, mm -hmm. I had written, I command that I will not be the last one to get married. Wow. I didn't even know that I was thinking like that. You wrote right? that in 2020? In 2020. I guess my mind was really on marriage at that point. How's that working for you? Oh, you know. I say that because we're talking about Candy. How long did it take for her to get there? And as a career-driven woman, woman, do you think that you've been delayed in love because of your drive? Oh, yeah. I didn't even allow myself to date all throughout high school, college. What? You weren't getting that thing, thing? No. Oh, me like, neither. I, praise, praise the Lord. Absolutely. <laughs> But, Hallelujah. but no, I did, it, men didn't phase me until I was like 25. I was yeah. a late bloomer. Yeah. And, you know, um, I was okay with that because I literally, you know, it's like when you have to find yourself, finding yourself has different, different, different compartments, different yeah. departments. Right. There's finding yourself personally, there's finding, there's finding yourself professionally. Mm -hmm. I was so hell bent on finding myself professionally for the past like 25 years. Right. That, that, and when I became 25 and I finally got into my career and I was like, okay, <laughs> what a man at? What a man! What, what a man! Right. What a man! Yeah. I was like, what a hat? What a hat? You know, what a hat? They're still not, they're still not, not around, really. Um, but I was able to like, get different samples and yeah. whatnot, and I started enjoying uh, the male species. Um, where was I even going with that? <laughs> you know, what a man! At. What I am. Um, but you have to, there are different departments that you do have to find yourself yeah. in and you don't have to try to get to them all at once. You don't have to ever try to get to you all of them. You, I just wanted to seek myself out professionally first because I knew exactly what I wanted. When I came to men, I didn't know what I wanted, so I didn't need to delve there yet. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. Let me ask you, do you feel like 10 years later, you've made so much success in your career, right? Figuring out what is next. Do you think you can have it all? 
Yes. Okay. You can definitely have it all, but at different points. At different oh, points. And maybe and, and maybe all at a short amount of time, you know, at, at some point. Yeah, what's the word? It's like those circles, and I, I forgive me for not knowing the name of these circles. I should know this, but the circles that overlap. And what I'm talking about is, you see how there's always that slither of overlapping mm -hmm. in those circles? The paradigm, a paradigm circles. And, um, you know, it's like uh, career, profession. And when I say career, or, or excuse me, career and personal. And when I say personal, I'm talking about being that amazing wife, being that amazing mom, being that, you know, taking the kids to soccer practice and da da da. But there's this tiny slither where they can overlap at maybe certain points in your life. Maybe that's at year one of marriage. Maybe that's yeah. then at year 10 of marriage. Yeah. But there's always going to be that point, at least through my deep dives and my interviews with these yeah. different celebs. Yeah. There's always that point where you don't feel like you're doing enough. Yeah. Even Kim K, yeah. lover or hater. Uh, there's always points where she feels like she could be a better mom. Yeah. There's always points where you feel like you can be a better dad, a yeah. better daughter, you know, calling grandma, calling mom and dad, you know, there's, there's always points where you feel like you can do better. But the biggest thing in life is doing the best you can with what you got. Yeah. Um, and if that's getting out of the bed then, and that's yeah. a, and that's a triumph for you, yeah. that's been a triumph for me several times yeah. in the past. Three years easily. Absolutely. Getting out of bed, taking a shower, mm -hmm. um, going to work out, going to work out, yeah. and, or doing one day of no tears. Yeah, it's for me, it's been praying mm -hmm. because I have to say that in the journey of, and I just say the journey of life, the journey of waiting, the journey of trusting God. Right, there have been real moments where I have been upset with God for the delay. For the journey, because mm -hmm. if you would have told me that we was gonna be journeying. Mm -hmm. Ten years later. Ten years later. Still like, what is this? What's going on? Yeah. No, I mean, some of this is what I pray for, but wait a minute, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> because I mean, in my mind, the Lord could go by my manuscript. Yeah. I write a good story. I, I hear you. You know I what I'm saying? You. Yeah, but that's when He laughs at you. He laughs at you. I know. Face. Uh, I don't want you to laugh no more, Lord. Hey, what is it? Uh, tell the Lord your plan and hear him laugh or something yeah. like that. Like, listen to him chuckle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah girl. And it's so interesting to see. Do you feel like you've given up hope? No. Okay. So long as there is breath in my body, I am worthy. Okay. And I'm never about to give up any type of hope. Um, that hope can be delayed. Yeah. That hope can go three months of me not thinking about my favor and not thinking about that I should remain faithful, but I'll never give up hope because yeah. that's not who I am. Yeah. And I don't think anyone is that way, but there's just certain times where don't think that you have to be hopeful every single day. Right. And that's what my problem was. You know, I was beating myself up because I didn't have a plan and I wasn't sure. Yeah. And is it all over? Yeah. yeah. It's like, girl. And those are real questions for real ambitious women. Mm -hmm. It's like, girl, it's been three months. Don't be dramatic. <laughs> it can be th three years can go by and I can still just be stagnant. Um, I call it stagnant, but so long as there's breath in my body, I am moving yeah. forward and yeah. I haven't ended anything. Yeah. And so long as you haven't ended anything, there's room for opportunities. There's, there's room. room for promise. There's room for you to move forward. Yeah. And literally when I say that, I can't emphasize enough. Moving forward is literally breathing that next breath. Yeah. Yeah. I always tell people that I believe that as long as you're living, there's more right with you than there is wrong. Beautiful. Yeah, Beautiful. for sure. And I believe that that is one of the things that God was showing me. If we want to go and take a text, I, uh, I, it, I always talk about being provoked to purpose. And so there's a story and where there's this lady called Panina and Hannah. Mm. And so Panina was and Hannah were married to the same man, right? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. You know, you know that was that how they got down in the Bible. Oh, that's okay. Right. Okay. Well, Panina was always pregnant, but her husband didn't really love her. Hannah was the one who her husband loved and adored, but she was barren. So Hannah was totally fine with having the love from her husband, not uh, her husband, you know, not being able to bear children. But every time she would get comfortable, here come Panina. Ha, 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 ha. I'm pregnant. Mm -hmm. I'm pregnant. And it was the jealousy that provoked Hannah to throw herself at God's feet and say, God, please. Give me a child and I will give this child back to you. Make a long story short, Hannah got pregnant with Samson and Samson was the savior of the kingdom at that time. And it tells, it shows me about what social media does. And we were you talk, talked about stagnation. Okay. You know, social media has a way of making you feel like you're stagnant because you're not doing what other people are doing. Yeah. But if we look at what social media can be, which is the panina, and provoking us to purpose because anytime that you're supposed to be doing something, God is going to send somebody yeah. to be doing it. Yeah. 
You know you want to buy a house and then your best friend always, God, I just bought a new property. I just did this. I just did that. You know you want to travel and then your girlfriend, I, yeah. I go like here. Yeah. And it's so that God can keep that dream alive. Yeah. And I think that's a beautiful pivot. You cannot continue to yeah. compare yourself. To Absolutely. Others. You know, I'm a swimmer and I swam for, uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Competitive swimmer since I was. Girl! Y'all hear this? Yeah. She a competitive swimmer now. So, so I, I only say that because sometimes when I'm speaking to people um, and, and doing speeches or whatever and at colleges and whatnot, what I always tell them is when you're swimming, and I started swimming when I was like mm, three years old okay. and I started competitive at five. Um, stopped in college at Vanderbilt. Mm. But uh, as a swimmer, you are told to jump off that block. Yeah. Don't you dare look left. Don't you dare look right. Because that will cut off a millisecond of your time. Really? And then all of a sudden, you know, you have that laser stop finish at the end. And that second, that millisecond that you were looking left to see where your competition was or that millisecond that you were looking right. That's the time that you're eating up that you could have mm. given to yourself and could have pushed you forward, could have propelled you forward to be the winner yeah. in that race. And so when you get in there, the only competition is, within. is yourself. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. the only one. So that's why I always tell people when it's like, well, she don't worry about her dream. Mm -hmm. That's not yours. Mm -hmm. That's not the journey that God made for mm -hmm. you. Well, he don't worry about that because mm -hmm. you don't know what he went through. Mm -hmm. You don't know how many tears he cried. You don't Absolutely. know how many times he thought about ending it. Yeah. Don't worry about them. Yeah. Worry about yours. And that makes the journey so much more beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, friend. Oh. Thank you. I enjoyed chatting with you. I enjoy chatting with you too. And I know this has been a, a passion project yes, for you. And for I hope sure. that you can continue these shows and deliver your own testimony. I know yeah. you're interviewing us and talking yeah. to us and whatnot, but you have your own story. Yeah. And I hope that your viewers take a take time out to listen to your, is your first show gonna be, is it gonna be all you? It needs to be all it you. It needs to be all me. Yeah, where you telling be. your story yeah. because, um, and so if you need to go back to the first story, the first show that she dropped, please do that because Nina has such a powerful story. She's a walking testimony and yeah. I don't take that lightly. And when you have a friend like Nina, you know, make sure you don't forget to pour into them because yeah. they're so busy pouring into other people. So as soon as she mentioned that she was gonna have a show or a podcast, I was like, girl, you know, I don't feel like <laughs> talking about my testimony right now because I'm not where I wanna be, but because I love her so much and I believe in her vision and I see her passion, I said, well, guess what? Maybe this is God saying, it's okay to share your testimony yeah. even when you're not at the top, like yeah. you want to be. The testimony is a part of the what? Yeah. The, journey. the journey. The journey. The journey. The journey. And welcome back to The Nina Show. On this segment, it is called Ask Nina. And listen, when you ask me, I may answer in Righteous Nina or Ratchet Nina my answer. Okay, okay. I'm glad you got us a drink. Oh, it's mine, but. Oh, you might need it for this, mm -hmm. okay? Okay. So today we have a caller. Caller number one, you there? I'm here. Okay, child, tell us what's going on. What you got to ask Nina? Uh, okay, so I just feel like I'm the girl that always gets put in the friend category. Mm. So um, I had a friend and he basically knows my back history with guys because we're friends. You know, we share stories. But then, you know, we became a little bit more than friends or I thought that's what we were leading up to. Oh. Um, we did have sexual intercourse. Everything was going good. And then he kind of like it like he was giving signs that he you know wasn't into it as much as i thought he was in the beginning before doing what we did into the sex or into you into me okay he's all for the the, the sex if, you, if you giving it out okay. but i just feel like you know it's cool but when i talk about stuff about like progressing the relationship i can see him being a little bit uncomfortable i don't know if it's because he doesn't want to take the friendship there or if it's me and you know talking to my homegirls it's kind of like okay you gotta know who to be patient for or know who to like you know just say okay this probably ain't working he's not for me but you know it's some good things there it's not all bad but i just think that every time I bring up the relationship things, it's like he doesn't really speak on it. And I can sense like him being a little bit uncomfortable. Okay. Okay. I think I'm going to start with Righteous Nina. I think Righteous Nina wants to say that you play a dangerous game by waiting for anybody. Mm -hmm. It is very dangerous. It is very dangerous because 
You're waiting for somebody with the expectation that they're going to do something that you don't know they're going to do. And why would you wait? This is your life. You have one life to live. So you play very dangerous and given basically giving somebody over the power mm -hmm. over you when you wait for them mm -hmm. to do right. Like it's like, I don't know if that's that's the good. Mm -hmm. And then also we want to take a text. It also says the blessings of the Lord make you rich and to them he adds no sorrow. So when God makes a blessing rich, when he sends you something, mm -hmm. it adds to your life and it's no sorrow that comes along with it. That's how you know it's a God thing and not just a, you know, a bang, bang, mm -hmm. thank you, man, which mm -hmm. we all, if you want that. Now, yeah. Ratchet's Nina would say, girl, <laughs> girl, do him the way he doing you. Uh, no. Move on. Move on. Move on. Move on. Oh yeah. I Move mean, on. A man, don't Friend. let a, don't let a man tell you what he thinks about you more than once. Don't mm. let him tell you what he thinks about you two times. She has been told without him saying anything that he is not interested in Dang, being in right. a relationship with her, not interested in being intentional with her. And that word intentional is so important when it comes to relationships yeah. and dating because you don't, especially as us, you know, as we're getting older, we don't want to just wait and see what these men have to say. Right. We have to deal with people who are intentional. And in doing so, you have to be intentional about the way that you date. So with that being said, respect yourself and respect that cootie cat. And move <laughs> on. And move but on. the other thing is, going back to the homework, yeah. is what do you want? Mm. Being clear. Because if you want, you know, everybody's in this. Some people are in a phase where they just want to keep their numbers down and just be with a guy. And he may got good, you know what? And it's a good time. But if that's not really what you want, you have to be honest with yourself. And if he's not at the place to give it, I do agree with Fran. Move yeah, on. Move on. Move on. How many years have you guys known each other? Um, so I would say a good five years. Oh, now, Fran, you should live with that now. Yeah. 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 Five years. Yeah. yeah. And if it didn't happen. Yeah. Then. Either he going to have to shit on the pot to get off. Ain't that what they say? We don't even need him on the pot anymore. We Because guess what? <laughs> it's, it's not about the man. And I'll okay. Put, you know, I love talking to Dr. Phil or not talking to him, but watching Dr. Phil because he's always, you know, women will come on the show and be like, I just really want him to. And I'm just hoping that he'll choose. Why wait for him to make the decision? You make it. You make the decision. I got the power. Pull out, girl. <laughs> pull out. Pull, uh, pull out of the situation. But he is playing, playing the other advocate. Uh -huh. What if she is like enjoys, there's something about him that she's enjoyed. She should still just have the power to walk away because we know dating is hard. Yeah, dating is hard. So maybe he'll continue to be that great friend and that great shoulder to cry on. Yeah. He's enjoying the cootie cat. He's always dreamt about it. He's always wondered what it was like. <laughs> Like now, now he's getting friendship and the benefits when you mm. really want more of an emotional connection and then at, at some point a relationship. Yeah. So don't even play with each other anymore. Revert, 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 abort, 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 leave. Or just become, just remain friends. But with no sex. Absolutely no sex. Absolutely no but sex. But does sex just benefit her? Or I mean, just benefit him or does it benefit her too? It's hurting her. Why do you think she's uh, calling your show? You're right. It's hurting you. Mm-hmm. You, got you know, at first I didn't think it was, mm. but because it kind of started off like you said, like in a um, just you know I'm just having fun, but then I'm I'm getting feelings, and I want it to be about fun, but I can't ignore how I feel. Yeah. Either. Yeah. And that's where respect comes in. Mm -hmm. And that's respecting the mind, the body, yeah. and the soul. Yeah. And she doesn't deserve, she sounds like she wants to be in a relationship. Yeah. She doesn't deserve yes. to be played with. Yeah. And you know, one of the things that I've learned going back to what you want, and I wrote it in my book, Waiting to Be Found, mm -hmm. yes, is when you are not clear, you get any old thing. And you really have to be honest about what it is that you want. And God is not going to sing you what you really want while you're entertaining mm -hmm. just any old thing. I used to think, you know, you can get your husband while you know you throwing it back and having a good time. <laughs> but I just don't think that that's true. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have to become the higher being that you're seeking. Woo! Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, yeah. I was actually interviewing, who was I speaking? Oh, Saweetie. 
last week. I was like, who said something like that? It wasn't that profound. But, 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 no, I love Sweetie. I love Sweetie. She's um, sweet. But 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 uh, I, I said I confronted her with one of her her song lyrics. It was wrist on glitter, waist on, on dinner. I'm gonna show you how to bag an eight figure nigga. Hey! And, and I said, ever since you came up with that song, I've wanted to know what what are the three steps, Sweetie? What are the three steps to bag this eight figure dude? Yeah, yeah, that you talk of yeah. and or speak of. And she says, first you have to become the eight figure woman. She said, you have to basically become what you seek out. And in so many words, that's what I'm saying here. You know, don't be with anyone who doesn't have the intentions that you have. Yeah. Don't be with anyone that you feel like you have to beg and, and, and to meet you there. The man should already be waiting for you. Mm -hmm. You are coming in and, and, and giving him your decision. Don't allow someone to treat you like an option. Yeah, because you're the prize. You are the prize. Mm -hmm. Always been, always going to be it. Amen. Period. Period. Okay. <laughs> well, we hope we answer your question, caller, aka friend, aka sis. We hope no, that you, you guys did. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. So we don't want to hear about this man. And listen, we're gonna call in and check in with you because I believe that the Lord gonna sing you your husband. Will. Okay. Just be intentional. Yeah, and like that, leave him alone, y'all. Just leave him alone. And focus on yourself. Focus on creating your own hobbies and getting to know what you enjoy. Right. Uh, and he will come. Yeah. Yeah. But ain't nothing like a lesson of what you don't want. Ooh, child. You learn more about what you don't want with the wrong person that you... Ooh, child. That's a whole other segment. Oh, you right. You right. <laughs> All right, then. Well, thanks for calling in and asking Nina. No problem. Okay. Ladies. Bye. Bye. <laughs> That was so good. So when people call you and they have questions for you, do they not have to say their name or where they're from or anything? No, it's totally anonymous. Mm -hmm. We don't ask no questions. We don't ask none, won't be none. Love that. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Ooh. Oh my God. <laughs> now, Fran, you know how much I love to hike. That's not my thing at all. I know. But I'm so glad that you did this with me. Thank you. So me. as I'm doing the hike, I'm thinking about what are some things in your life that you feel you could tell to take a hike? Tell could it be I, the dog? I was about to say I could tell a dog. <laughs> or could it be, you know, procrastination? Could it be the fear of tomorrow? I'll go first. One of the things that I feel like I could tell to take a hike is... my inability to forgive and be forgiven mm. yeah i think it's a big part of life is knowing that in order to be forgiven you have to forgive you know the people who hold grudges yeah that's you yeah you know I, she be holding grudges y'all I, I didn't think i did but i did <laughs> <laughs> i do i do i do Ooh. oh my god oh my god you're gonna have to let that go you're gonna yeah. have to let that go I be mad. You're gonna have to tell that to take a hike. I have to tell it to take a hike. What do you think it is? Why do you hold the grudge? Does it make you, does it fuel you? No, because if I'm mad, I'm justifiably mad. There's no reason why. I didn't just make it up. I didn't just roll over. So if you did something, you really did something. So I feel justified. Do you feel justified having power over someone? Or I just mistake? feel justified in saying, ah. <laughs> that's not a good, that's not a good reason. That's not a good reason, girl. That's not a good reason now. <laughs> take oh. a hike. <laughs> yeah, that is to take a hike. For me, um, there's a lot of things in my life that I need to take a hike, but in this specific season, I want um, self-doubt mm. to take a hike. Yeah. I want, um, I just want to relinquish the idea and the yeah. thought that what I do is not enough. Yeah. And I also want to, I want to take a hike, the, the idea that I don't know who I am fully because it can be a debilitating yeah. idea. You know, you're 30 something years old or maybe you're 20 something years uh -huh. old and society tells you you're supposed to already know your yep. purpose. Yep. You're already supposed to know what you want to be when you yep. grow up. Yep. You're already supposed to know, supposed yep. to know. Yep. When in actuality. If you fall down, yep. You're supposed there, to know. There are 80 something year olds who just, you and know, that's the they journey. went through life and, yeah. and I still don't know and I'm still learning. Yeah. So. And you know, I think about our sister, Cicely Tyson, as I was preparing to do this podcast, mm -hmm. she said she didn't do her book until she was like almost 90. Well, she was 90 in her 90s. Mm -hmm. And she said, I wanted to have something to say. And I thought about that as like also taking a hike to perfectionism. Yeah. To thinking everything had to be perfect. I love that. Yeah. Well, I'm going to take that. I wish we had a ball so I could just light it on fire. And say, and tell it, take a hike. But you know what we can do? We can check this out. Oh, come on.
on here, friend. Oh we telling her to take her. Well, I never like to leave you guys without a word and I never like to leave you guys without a word of prayer. So my word for this week is what do you want? What do you want now? What do you want God for, to do in your life at this moment? And I would really ask you to ask God to tell me, God, show me the secrets that only you know. And so in that, you'll be able to write the vision, make it plain and present it to him. So let us pray before we go. God, we just thank you for this time that we've been able to be together. We pray, Father God, that Lord Jesus, your goodness and mercy shall follow us everywhere that we go, that you would continue, God, to let good things, God, be a part of our lives, that our cheeks would burn, Father God, of us being so happy and our confession will be, we didn't know that we could have this much joy. I pray, Father God, for our futures because you're already there. And Father God, every place that our feet tread upon that you would give us, because you are the God who said that all things work together for our good, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, the number of our days you will fulfill. We believe what you said about us. And it is in your matchless name that we believe it, we receive it, and it is done. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Bye. Now, I know you like that episode of Nina Show. Don't forget to share it with a friend now. And make sure you follow me on all platforms at Nina Simone Wright. Now, listen, you can like, you can comment, and you can subscribe. But you better keep it cute or else, baby, I'm going to put you on mute. Okay?